Now we come to Karika 37. 37. Yes. Sarvam Pratyupabhogam Yasmat Purushasya Sadhayati Buddhi Saivacha Vishinasti Puna Pradhana Purushantaram Suksha. Your attention, please. <coughs> we have earlier seen that the function of Buddhi is to ascertain to ascertain, ascertainment, have certain knowledge, have determinative knowledge. We have also seen that this determinative knowledge is as much as with regard to the objects of the external world as, as, as with regard to the objects called, prameyas called, prakriti, purush, and their mutual difference. Shabdat upalabdhi jnanam, pradhana purushantar upalabdhi jnanam. Right? Yesterday I did that. So now he says, sarvam pratyabhogam, he carries the same thought, in expresses the same thought in different languages. Sarvam pratyabhogam yasmat purushasya sadhayati buddhi. Since it is buddhi itself, that is mahat, buddhi itself, which sair, sadhayati, which accomplishes, sadhayati, which accomplishes the whole experience of buddhi, yasmat, because purushasya sarvam pratyabhogam buddhi sadhayati. Since it is the buddhi, which accomplishes the whole experience of the self. Whatever self experiences is caused by, accomplished by buddhi. Since everything is known by buddhi, and then that known world, world, W-O-R-L-D, that entire known world or experienced world is submitted to the self for its revelation. Right? Saivacha Vishinasti Puna Pradhana Purushantaram Suksham. Since that is so, for that reason, it is Buddhi again which Vishinasti reveals, which manifests, which reveals Pradhana Purushantaram Suksham, the subtle difference between Pradhana and Purush, between Prakriti and Purush. Subtle difference between Prakriti and Purush. What does that difference amount to? Because we have seen in one karika, in one, var in one karika, uh, uh, chetana vadiva lingam bhavati. Chetana va achetanam api chetana vadiva lingam bhavati. That the buddhi, even though uh, unconscious, looks possessed as if of consciousness and the purush though udasina though actually udasina indifferent drashta etc becomes appears like an agent like but then buddhi reveals their subtle difference unveils this ignorance because this happens due to ignorance their self is not realized, their self is not known in its own special form as pure consciousness and is attributed to buddhi. And buddhi is not known in its pure buddhitva, in its pure buddhi character and is its attributes, its features are attributed to self. We think that self is ignorant, self is happy, self is sad, etc. Though these are the features, these are the characteristics actually belonging to buddhi. So he says, because buddhi manifests the whole experience, manifests 
the whole world of experience to the self, it again reveals the subtle difference between Pradhana and Purush. Subtle difference. He says subtle difference. At the manifest level, we find it very difficult to disentangle buddhi from the self. Because buddhi, since it is sattva dominated and sattva is prakashakam, translucence, transparent, luminous, like consciousness. Buddhi is not consciousness, but it is luminous. Luminous. Prakashatva. Sattvam lagu prakashakam. There is a revealing, there is a revealing character in buddhi. And that revealing character is quite close to purush as consciousness. So they get mixed up. They get amalgamated. And there is a confusion. We say, oh, it is purush who is happy or sad or miserable. In fact, it is buddhi. And we think, oh, it is, it is buddhi which is conscious, etc. Though it is purush which is pure consciousness. And when the stage of apavarga comes, after a good deal of tapasya and sadhana, we are able to see the subtle difference between purush and prakriti. Now remember one thing. So th I'm saying this because I don't have to emphasize it later on and I might not just get time for that. Remember one thing. What is, what is it to understand the difference between the self and buddhi or self or prakriti? What does it amount to? It amounts to not just intellectual knowledge. Oh, yes. For example, Ramesh says, yes, I know that Purush is consciousness and Prakriti is unconscious and they have their special functions and that's all and we need not confuse those functions with each other. This is merely intellectual knowledge which you all might have obtained up to some degree in one way or the other till now. That is one thing. I also know if I follow Sankhya that there is this difference. And yet I am not a liberated soul. Why? Because when we act, when we act as if we are only self, and that we shall not allow ourselves to be affected by the buddhi, then we become true selves. That is realizing the true death. That is why it's called self-realization. To realize oneself as a self. Realize, to experience oneself as a self, as distinct from the buddhi, which is no doubt different from the self, but with which we happen to confuse the self very often in daily life. Satyandate mitune kritya pravartate yam lokam yavahara. As Shankar himself says, he's following, he's following the Sankhya thought in the first, first lines of, you know, Brahma uh, 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 Sutra Bhashya. Huh? We mix up, we bracket, we parenthesize truth and untruth. Truth is there is a self. Truth is there is a prakriti. But what is untruth? That there is a confusion. Who confuses? Buddhi confuses. And Buddhi itself, later on, when it reflects upon itself, when it reflects upon its doings, it then says, oh, I was mistaken. As we sometimes seem to uh, uh, appear to ourselves. No, I was mistaken in my judgment about that buddy, that person. He is indeed a very nice man. And I thought he is a fraud. Isn't it? It happens or not? So we correct ourselves. We correct our own mistakes. So buddhi also... Since it is capable of jnana, and it is also capable of ajnana, ajnana, anaishwarya, etc., there also it features. It is capable both of ajnana and jnana. So when it comes to acquire true jnana, distinguishes between purush and prakriti, the, uh, that is, uh, uh, comes, to obtain, comes to acquire the real difference, or know the real, uh, real difference, 
between prakriti and purush as prakriti and purush we find apavarga right and then there is tanmatranya vishesha i have explained this why they are called avishesha eti smita vishesha shanta ghora samurash and now i come to 39 what is 39 we rather skip to this is easy suksha tesham niyata matra pitrija nivartante uh, all right that at the time of death uh, the gross body departs though it is born of parents right we move to i i i did not dwell upon it because some of the important karika still remain and you can understand it by yourself i move to 40 yes purvo sannam asaktam nihatam mahadadi suksha paryantam sansarati nirupabhogam bhavai adivasitam lingam this karika contains the conception contains the definition of suksha sharir why is sukshya sharir necessary why should we need it because as i earlier said that whatever we do leave its imprint leave its impression on the mind and these impressions are called sanskaras or vasanas or bhavas bhavai right uh, at one place he says भावस्थिरा जननातर सौरीदानी कालिदासी तच्चेत स्मरती नूनमबोधपूर्व भावस्थिरा जननातर सौरीदानी भाव संस्कार स्थिता जनमोंतर सौसदा द लव्स द असोसिएशन्स द अफेक्शन्स ऑफ द प्रीवियस एक्जिस्टेंसेस भावस्थिरा दे बिकम दे बिकम इम्प्रिंटेड in the form of impressions in the mind so linga sharir carries indefinite in indefinite number of impressions of indefinite number of births and deaths in it right so he says purvotpannam it is born earlier purva means at the beginning of the creation at the beginning of the creation which creation which creation need not be the first creation but another creation right every creation is another creation no creation is first creation according to sankhyan yog like a cyclical cyclical time right like we have the concept of linear time riju kal riju kal as i said there is cyclical time cyclical time and there is riju kal from here to this this is called progressive time progressive time recall the marxist idea that there is progress in human history because each first moment each prior moment is succeeded by another moment there must be progress progress means material progress have we progressed morally or spiritually just ask yourself though we have of course progressed materially there there has been so much scientific discoveries and technological achievement but when i look back i am now plus 71 when i look back when i was 20 i find this world much worse much worse right so progress can be seen from different points of view tulsidas often used to say kali yug oh kali yug has arrived things would degenerate in kali yug so this is linear time riju kal 
रिजु कॉल रिजु कॉल एंड दिस इज कॉल्ड आवर्ती कॉल आवर्ती कॉल कॉल आवर्ती कॉल विच इज सीक्लिकल ही सेज सूक्ष्म एंड ही सेज वेर इज दैट यस नो फोर्टीन पूर्वोत्पन्नम दिस इज पूर्वोत्पन्नम और पूर्वोत्पन्नम दिस इज पूर्वोत्तम दिस इज रॉन्ग पर है पूर्वोत्पन्नम असक्तम असक्त मीन्स स्टेबल स्टेबल असक्त स्टेबल असक्तम इन अदर वर्ड्स इट मीन्स इट इज अनइम्पीडिड Unimpeded, it can even enter a stone. Vachaspati Mishra says, "Sukshu Sharir can enter even a stone." Right? This is Sukshu Sharir, and it is made up of Mahadadi Sukshu Paryanta, Mahadadi Sukshu Paryanta, Mahat Ahankar, Ekadash Indriyas. Thirteen and five tanmatra, eighteen. This is made up of eighteen entities. Mahadadi, sukshu paryantam, up to sukshu tattvas. Right? Sukshu pancha tanmatras. It is made up of eighteen elements. Niyatam, and it is niyat. It is almost eternal. It is almost eternal. Asaktam means unimpeded, unimpeded. Nobody can obstruct its movement. When a man dies, his sukshu sharir persists along with the self, along with the self, and it enters to acquire another body through any any man, not any through two particular man and woman. To a particular man and woman, even if it be a test test tube being, yes, it determines, it determines, right? According to the previous karma, which have now become ripe to have fruition, इनका फल मिलने वाला है और फल मिलेगा जन्म के रूप में, शरीर के रूप is that clear to you i think i have done these things already sansarati nirupabhogam and it sansarat in wanders it wanders from one body to another body in the whole cosmos nirupabhogam without experiencing it is thul body through which experience becomes possible not through the sukshu body bhavai adhivasitam lingam because sukshu ling lingam lingam means sukshu sharir bhavai adhivasitam is a residence is a residence of bhavai of all the billions of impressions which we have of the actions done during all those existences jitne bhi ab tak hamare janm hue hain उन सब के जो भाव हैं उन सब के जो इम्प्रेशन हैं इस लिंग शरीर में रहते हैं कुछ का तो जन्म हो चुका है तो वो भाव खत्म हो चुके हैं दे हैव बीन एग्जॉस्टेड लाइक फॉर एग्जांपल, आई अपीयर फॉर दी एम एग्जाम आई पास इट विद फर्स्ट ईयर फर्स्ट डिवीजन एंड द फ्रूट ऑफ माय एफर्ट द फ्रूट ऑफ माई एफर्ट इज सिक्योरिंग और ऑप्टेनिंग ऑफ द एम डिग्री and my action is exhausted in obtaining of that degree isn't it then begins a new endeavor 
to find a job and then I try, I apply, etc., etc. Right? So some actions grew their thought. As I was writing a book, it took me seven, eight years when it was published, that chain of actions or one actions of doing work on a thinker got exhausted in the publication of the book. Right? Similarly, all action, actions of, some actions of our keep on, keep on, keep on being, uh, we keep on doing some actions and then they are exhausted in certain experiences or in certain results. Is that clear to you? Sansarati nirupabhogam, nirupabhogam, without experiencing, it doesn't experience anything. The activity of experience belongs to this foolish sharir, gross body. Do I move further? Shall we? Chitram yathasham vite sthanvadi bhyo bina yathachaya tadbad bina visheshait nitishthati nirashayam linga. Just as a painting, a painting cannot stand without a wall. Chitram yatha shramrite, without an ashray, without an alambana. If you want to hang a picture, you have to hang it on the wall. So the wall becomes ashray, ashray. Sthanvadi bhyo vina yatha chaya, and just as uh, there cannot be a shadow without there being such objects as tree, etc. Objects have shadows, and shadows cannot exist without, without corresponding objects. Isn't it clear? Yes. If there are objects, they must have shadows. Tadvad vina visheshai, vina visheshai tishthati nirashrayam lingam. Similarly, this nirashrayam lingam, this nirashray linga, nirashray, anashray, nirashray linga, tadvad vina visheshai natishthati. There's a slight modification to be made here. Let me see. Similarly, this nirashit linga, this suksha sharir has to acquire a body. Vina visheshai. Visheshai are mahabhutas. Remember, avishesha are panchitan matras. And visheshas are mahabhutas. Eh? That means a gross body. Linga sharir cannot stay alone. Though a self can stay alone in liberation. But ling or suksha sharir cannot stay alone for very long. It has to acquire visheshas. That is a gross body consisting of the visheshas, pancha mahabhutas, prithvi jaltej vayu akash. Is that clear? But why does the suksha sharir have to acquire a body? Because certain Karmas of ours remain to be exhausted. They propel the Sukhya Sharir to acquire a body. Had all our karmas and their fruits were exhausted, we will not need a rebirth. We need a rebirth because still certain karmas of our remain, the, the action, the fruits of certain karmas of ours remain to be experienced. And this is Ayush Bhog, etc. A particular kind of aid that we get, particular kind of experience that we get. Right? Some people go to, some people go to Antarctica. Some people are not even able to leave daily. Right? 
so this is all our this is the world this is our experienced world this we get according to the actions that we have done right any questions any queries Forty two, I will leave because the same theme is repeated in different words. Yes, 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 of course, of course, no doubt. Yes, of course, this theme has been explained at length in Yoga Bhashya. योग भाष्य फोर्थ पाद कैवल्य पाद यस कैवल्य पाद इनफैक्ट 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 योग इम्प्लाइज एंड सांख्य टू बिलीव वी हैव इन्फिनिट कैपेसिटीज एवरीबडी हैज इन्फिनिट कैपेसिटीज बट ओनली दोज कैपेसिटीज आर रियलाइज फॉर विच अवर कर्मज हैव मैच्योर we have known we know for example that einstein was a good violinist he was a good violinist but he did not turn to music he was capable of playing the violin but he turned didn't turn to music but some people who might have been might have also been good scientists turned to music instead and became great musicians like that then 43 no this two we can leave then we come to 44 44 44 dekhna beta 44 kahan se shuru hota hai हाँ धर्मेन गमनम ऊर्धम गमनम अधस्ता धर्मेन ज्ञान चाप वर्गो विपर्जयाद ईश्वति बंध धर्मेन गमनम ऊर्ध एंड धर्म बिलोंग्स टू प्रकृति दि सात्विक फॉर्म ऑफ प्रकृति इज धर्म एज वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन धर्मेन गमनम ऊर्ध वी गो अपवर्ड वी गो अपवर्ड in the ladder in, in the ladder of the world there is the animal world there is the human world and there is the dev lok we go upward dharmena gamanam urdha gamanam adhastad bhavati adharmena and if we do adharma we go down we go down ज्ञान चाप वर्ग विपर्जयादे बंध ज्ञान चाप वर्ग थ्रू नॉलेज नॉट थ्रू नॉलेज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड नॉलेज ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्ट्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड बट व्यक्ता व्यक्त व्यविज्ञान फ्रॉम द स्पेशल नॉलेज विच एक्रूज टू अस वेन वी डिस्टिंग्विश बिटवीन व्यक्त अव्यक्त एंड द सेल्फ and consciousness then a power go happens to us we are we are liberated and viparjaya viparjay brahma agyana viparjaya means the opposite of gyan opposite of gyan is either lack of knowledge or positive brahma positive illusion brahma bhranti gyan bandha we get snared we get bound to the world because of agyana what is that agyana last man yes yourself i i am again missing your name eh raman yes raman what is agyana oh no of course, that is only a synonym that is a paryay of agyana but what is this agyana agyana of what 
not not understanding the um, truthness yes. or uh, not uh, understanding the truthness the not understanding the not understand the truthness uh, yes truthness of what purusha you know is. just a moment yeah uh, the purusha is i, I not understanding the the truthness the tatva which is ultimate the, at the end what uh, we have satya to satya or satya 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 yeah truth about what self realization like no don't use the words which are commonly used we know there are these words we under to understand the meaning of them what is the meaning of self realization i just explained uh, uh, a moment ago uh, just removing the uh, no no gyan means what agyan means what gyan and agyan means what i want to know gyan means what gyan of what and agyan means what gyan of self gyan of self yes as no 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 let's not do use the word shankar ji let us not use the word sankhya we say yeah, knowledge of sankhya knowledge of self as buddhi no ha ah, yes then just disconnecting the our self uh, from uh, uh, the vrutti yes, yes 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 as yes. patanjali see, say chitta vrutti no no see if you i i plead with you when this session is over tomorrow you again revisit you revisit the sankhya karika from beginning to end slowly and slowly because a spokes person like me had to do sometimes certain things hurriedly hurriedly rapidly though i have tried hard to emphasize certain basic aspects of sankhya thought as contained in the karika but anyway when we say we have to realize self as self that means you have so far not realized yourself as self so what do you what did you know the self as so far we confuse the self with buddhi we confuse achetanam chetana vadivalingam bhavati return to the karikas again and again achetanam lingam unconscious buddhi which does everything appears as if possessed of consciousness and therefore every knowledge every feeling every willing is attributed to the self which in fact is pure consciousness which has no qualities which does not know which is not ignorant which does not feel pain and pleasure but they are attributed to it so jnana means drawing a true distinction knowing rather not not merely drawing knowing knowing means realizing the true distinction between self and buddhi or self and prakriti and between manifest prakriti, manifest tattvas and unmanifest prakriti and agyan means when we do not understand this special this top is uh, uh, first state distinction between the objects and confuse one object with the other confuse self with buddhi and buddhi with self for example say just a just a very elementary example suppose that i am a self but suppose i'll give you this is a very important point i i forgot to explicate it to you but there is still time i i can do this just a moment it's a very important point i should have done it before just say number 
these five things and any number of things, things like that, features like that. If I am five, five, I used to be five, eight plus half inch tall. Now I've reduced. Anyway, somebody can be five, nine or five, ten. Somebody can be five, seven. And ladies can be five, two, <laughs> etc. Anyway, so any person can have the, these features, right? And he can have at least three features at the same time, first, second, and third. He can be this much tall, this much bulky, and happy at the same time. Isn't it? Can I be or not? I can be. And all these features belong to me, I. They belong to I. Can I, if common sense is to be believed, see, say three, first three things of myself or not at the same time, and the rest of the things at different times? I can first two things be always, or sometimes, tall I am, tallness I retain, heaviness can reduce, etc. Sometimes I can be happy, Sometimes I can be depressed, and at another time, at, an at other times, I can be envious or jealous or sad, isn't it? No, but what is the difference between them? They are all predicated. They are all qualified qualities of the same body, same person. But is there any distinction between them? एक साथ तो हो भी सकता है और नहीं भी हो सकता है कुछ हम एक साथ ये जो आप फाइव जो एलिमेंट्स दिए हैं ना लेकिन आ, कुछ कुछ चीज़ें एक साथ नहीं हो सकती हैप्पीनेस एक साथ में हैप्पी भी नहीं हो सकती एक साथ में डिप्रेस भी नहीं हो सकती ठीक है वो तो ठीक है वो ठीक है और क्या इनमें फ़र्क है फ़र्क है मोमेंट का समय का क्षण की फर्क समय को भी भूल जाओ और क्या फ़र्क है फीलिंग्स की मन की स्थिति की मन की फीलिंग है और दूसरी मन की फीलिंग इसके अलावा क्या बोलूँ ये जो मेरी लंबाई है ये मेरे मन की फीलिंग है नहीं 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 ये टाइम टू टाइम समय पे जा रहा है ना काल पे समय के भी मत छोड़ो सपोज आई आई एट द मोमेंट से फर्स्ट थ्री थिंग्स आई एम दिस टॉल आई एम हैवी और बल्कि आई एम हैप्पी क्या डिस्टिंगशन है क्या अंतर अंतर तो है बिल्कुल ठीक है अंतर है जब गुण अंतर हैं कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स आर डिफरेंट तो अंतर तो है एक्चुअली uh, ये टाल जो फर्स्ट सेंटेंस है टाल और बल्कि और ये जो दो सेंटेंस है ये जो है एक्सटर्नल अपीयरेंस से रिलेटेड है और एक्सटर्नल अपीयरेंस से रिलेटेड है और जो हैप्पी और डिप्रेस्ड और यानी कि ये इंटरनल है ये जो मानसिक स्थिति है मानसिक स्थिति है ठीक है इतना तक ठीक है और कुछ कहना है आपको तो ये इनमें बेसिकली कि इन, इन दोनों सिचुएशन में इतना अंतर है अभी तक कि कुछ एक जो है वो एक्सटर्नल अपीरियंस और एक जो है इंटरनल अपीरियंस उससे क्या फर्क पड़ता है फिर अगर एक्सटर्नल या इंटरनल है हम आ, आ, किसी आदमी को देखकर उसकी मना स्थित का एग्जैक्ट मतलब वो नहीं बता सकते ना कि आ, वो वाकई डिप्रेस है या नहीं है वो तो ठीक है वो तो ठीक है आई अग्री लेकिन टाल को तो आ, मतलब जितना लेकिन होगा कई बार किसी को देखकर हम बता सकते हैं हाँ कई बार ये कई बार पता चलता है भाई क्या बात है तुम आज चुप चुप हो यू आर अनयूजली क्वाइट वट आई होप एवरी थिंग इज फाइन Was the matter? So and so forth. Sir, but in this, it is certain, right? As much as five. No, let me come to the point. Okay. All, all these two things. I am heavy or bulky. I am thin or slim. Like this. 
I have long eyes, broad forehead, so, so forth. I have moustache, so, so forth. These are features of the body. These are features of the body. But I say for the body, I am tall. Isn't it? Is it wrong to say if I tell somebody, how tall do you stand? How much do you stand? I'll say, I'm five, heart, uh, eight and a half inch. Right. Right. And, and my thinness and bulkness, bulkiness is, of course, evident. But this belongs to my body. But can I say that my happiness is bulky? Can I say that my happiness is tall or short or five, five foot eight inches tall? Can I say? Raman, can I say that? There is no para physical parameters, right? So within our experience, within our experience, this man's experience, there are differences. Certain things can be predicated of me. See, I am tall. I am heavy. I am heavy. 88 kg is not heavy, brother. It will not be heavy. The doctors have asked me to reduce weight or I will die soon. <laughs> right? Right. So, but I am happy. Suppose I was thin. Will not I be happy then? A thin person can also be happy and perhaps more happy <laughs> than a heavy person. But thinness or heaviness or moderate weight has no connection with happiness. I can, I can be happy even in fever, even in terrible fear. I'm in terrible fever, typhoid fever. But I'm happy if somebody tells me, oh, your book has been published. I can be happy in fever, as I, as I was just telling somebody here, right? So happiness, happiness, oh, I can be happy, I'm depressed, I, I'm envious. These, these do not have spatial dimensions like body, spatial dimensions. Do you understand? Spatial. Space is three-dimensional. Length, breadth, etc. Isn't it, Raman? But can I say my happiness is tall or broad and this much tall and this much broad? Or my depression is this? I can say I'm in deep depression. What is the depth of that depression? I can feel it. But I cannot measure it. So inchy deep. Though I can measure the depth of the well, of the well, W E double L, Pua. Pua ki depth mein naap sakta ho, but not of my depression or of my happiness. I'm deeply happy. I'm very envious. Very means what? How much, how much broad my jealousy or envy can be? So that means there's a dimension to our experience, which points to a reality within us, which is non-spatial. The states of the self, the proper, the mental states, properly mental states, are different from physical states. Because physical states, my bulkiness, my being tall, my being broad-chested, so on and so forth, have spatial dimensions, while mental states do not have like sadness, depression, etc. So there's a distinction between self and the body at the very first level. So we have to understand this distinction. And this distinction we draw. If I, if I ask you, sir, I'm very sad today. If you, if you tell somebody, I'm very sad today. Oh, how much sad you are? 
वट इज देंथ ऑफ योर सैडनेस आपके सैडनेस की लंबाई क्या है भाई जरा बताओ क्या लंबाई तो शरीर की होती है भाई सैडनेस की कोई लंबाई थोड़ी होती है आप कहेंगे सो वी ड्रॉ दीज डिस्टिंगशन बिटवीन बॉडिली एंड द मेंटल और द बॉडिली एंड द सेल्फ एट द वेरी प्राइमरी लेवल एट द वेरी प्राइमरी लेवल एम आई क्लियर और नॉट हम्म दो दे ऑल बिलोंग टू मी बट सर्टन थिंग्स बिलोंग टू माई बॉडी and certain things belong to myself that means i impose my body upon myself when i say i am tall if i mean self if i purely mean actually mean self that i impose my body upon myself and this imposition of the bodily features upon the self is what is called agyana agyana शंकर से स्थूलोहम स्थविरोहम एंड भाष्य बधिरोहम दिस बिलोंग्स टू बॉडीली फीचर्स एंड सो डज डेकार्ट रेने डेकार्ट यस लाइक दैट सो लेट मी कंप्लीट दिस ज्ञान न चाप वर्ग विपर्जयात इष्यते बंधा एंड बंधा बॉन्डेज हैपन्स ड्यूरिंग टू विपर्जय ज्ञान ड्यू टू ऑपोजिट नॉलेज दैट इज इग्नोरेंस अज्ञान इग्नोरेंस एंड देन वी कैन स्किप यू नो फोर्टी फिफ्थ इट्स ईजी एंड देन we come to chapter 9 chapter 9 i will not go into these things to stir siddhi etc because they are their number is too much uh, uh, to be uh, their number is too much to be explained in a short time and they simply have to be understood siddhi tushti etc i hope given given the fact that i have talked about a few things during the last 7 or 8 days you will be able to understand these karikas then we skip 48 then we skip 49 प्लीज जरा इसमें देखो जरा निकालो निकालो आगे चलते हो पचास के बाद निकालो फिफ्टी के बाद हैं ये इक्यावन दिस इज आरा आसान है इसको आप देखिएगा अपने आप आगे नवम फिफ्टी टू विल डू नेक्स्ट विल डू नेक्स्ट राइट is slightly important we'll do next